Rule number 42. Ah! Never, ever let your guard down. What on earth is wrong with you? What time is it? Nearly dawn. Time to begin your training. If the sun ain't up, neither am I. Morning, Luke. I'm an egg. So, we finally found out where his secret base was, but Sunglasses caught us and was basically set on killing us. Luckily, I was able to save Luke in the nick of time before the base blew up. Good thing I did, because he ended up saving my life right after. And that's how we became friends. Funny how near-death experiences can bring people together, huh? Right, Luke? It is far too early in the morning for you to dare expect us to be on speaking terms right now, buddy. When stick fighting, it is crucial to have an intimidating fighting stance. Without it, your opponent will not fear you and will have the advantage. Hold your swords out. Always keep your stick saber in front of you and tilting towards your opponent. Now, lean in forward and put on a mean face. Less leaning, more mean a impressive guy. Luke, your form needs work. How could you possibly know what I need when your eyes have been shut this whole time? Before fighting, it is useful to make some sort of loud declaration with the intention of intimidating your opponent, thus giving you an advantage. What do you mean? You must show your opponent that your tongue is just as sharp as your weapon. Practice on each other. Okay, okay, I got this. Let me try. You're so bad at cooking, you can burn water! No, that is not that. Oh, yeah? Well, you're so bad at math, you think addition goes in a dishwasher. Last chance, buddy. Drop the weapon and I'll rethink rearranging your face. I'll mess you up, son! You're gonna need a new set of tear ducts when I'm done with you! I'm about to pay your tuition for a full degree of painonomics, punk! You don't understand. I'm Death's understudy, and the show is about to begin. Very good. Now we should move on to- I'm gonna beat you so hard they'll swear you were a hunk of blue cheese! It's judgment day, pal, and I'm your personal judge, jury, and executioner! I think you two are ready to- This is the jungle, my friend, and tonight you are the prey! This ain't no convenience store, but there's a clearance sale and you must go! Boys, please. Okay, I got one, I got one. I'm, uh, I'm the doctor around here, and, uh... And come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And, and my diagnosis is you need some serious percussive therapy. Well, you might want to call the fire department because I am going to burn this place down. You, uh, um, you're going to need a, uh, you've got to, come on, 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 come on. Uh, I can't think this fast. You've got to give me a second to think. No thinking. It's got to be pure instinct, like peeing to mark your territory kind of instinct. It's not that easy for me, okay? I can't come up with these one-liners as fast as you. I don't want to beat you into submission, but I will if I have to. You think you could just threaten me into playing your little game? Do you know what I'm capable of? What are you capable of? I'll break you into so many pieces, they'll think you were the leftovers of a campfire, bud. Well, you're going to have to eat out of a tube that eats out of a tube when I'm through with you, son. If you two are quite finished, perhaps we could try learning to actually use the weapons we're holding. We interrupt your regular broadcasting to bring you... Cooking with Derek! Welcome back, everyone! I'm Derek, and today we're going to make us some delightful apple and oat porridge. All you need is a nice big apple, a teaspoon of salt, a third of a cup of raisins, four cups of water, one and a half cups of oats, and a whole bunch of cinnamon! And listen closely, you don't even need an apple, you can use pears or- Hey, what is this? Who exactly are you? I'm Derek! Are you here to make some delightful apple and oats? Get out of here! Scram! Oh boy, they're gonna make it on their own! How exciting! Bozo. Must have wandered into the wrong studio. That's the guy from Cooking with Derek, right? What's his name again? We interrupt your regular broadcasting to bring you more questions from the audience! Today's question is from someone called Luke and Carl's biggest fan. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's so nice. What a swell person. Hey, Luke and Carl. I made you a Luke and Carl theme song that goes like this. Luke and Carl, come on, grab your friends. We go to very distant lands. Luke the stick man and Carl the same thing. Fun that will never end. Luke and Carl. Whoa! We've got our own theme song. This is the greatest day of my life. All right, so step one is to find a guy to record this thing. It's going to be great. Could we get a choir? Choirs make everything more epic. Um... Guys, uh, come here a second. What's the matter? One second, guys. Uh huh. What? Seriously? So it turns out that there's some other cartoon TV show with a really similar theme song. So they probably sue us for like a million bucks, even though our song is ten times better. We'll get our top lawyers on it. And buddy, right back anytime. We love hearing from readers. <laughs> Ah! 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 All right, 
Listen carefully. You do not need to yell all throughout the fight. Are you sure? Cause stop yelling. Man, this training stuff is hard. I'm sore in places I didn't think I could get sore. You said it, Carl. Well, at least we're safe from the stickinator here. And if we ever see him again, we'll be a little more prepared. Ooh, yeah. I think I'm just going to stay in this spot for a second. Yeah, just catch our breaths for a second. Dinner. Now. I'm going to kill him. It's because he's so old. He's afraid that if he stops moving, he won't be able to start again. So, I've been meaning to ask. What's the deal with this whole great stick thing? You haven't heard of it before? Our hometown was pretty isolated. The great stick created all doodles. Stick men, hoodles, and all the others. It gave us life and everything we have. Most importantly, it gave us the power of the stick. The power of the stick allows the great stick's creation to master the world around them. Wait, hang on. You're telling me that all stick men were created by the great stick, right? That's what he just said. Oh, I get it. So all stick men were created by a great stick. I get it. It's a joke. He's serious, Carl. So let me get this straight. The great stick made us and gave us the power of the stick, right? Correct. Here's the thing, then. Luke and I have both kind of accidentally made sticks pop out of thin air in the past. Is that what you're talking about? To an extent, yes. The ability to create sticks out of thin air is one of the easiest and simplest powers that the great stick grants. Well, what do you know? We're actually superheroes. Now we can wear spandex in public without getting yelled at. So, are you going to teach us to use the power of the stick tomorrow? Perhaps. But now it is time for you two to sleep. Are you going to read us a bedtime story? No. Sing us a lullaby? No. Give us a cup of warm milk? No. Well, come on, you gotta do something. All right, I'll tell you a fun fact. Since termites love eating twigs and branches, sleeping stick men are considered to them to be the equivalent of a four-course meal. How on earth is that a fun fact? Good night, boys. When's the last time you just infected this place? If you want to harness the power of the stick, you must focus intently. And this'll let us shoot sticks out of our hands, right? Exactly. I got this. Hadouken! <laughs> no, that is not the- Kamehameha! Avada Kedavra! Rasengan! Are you two quite finished? Shazam! Futsuro da! Bibbidi babbidi boo! Concentrate. Focus on the stick in your mind, and it will come into reality. Okay. I got this. Focus. Focus. Make a stick poof out of thin air. Concentrate. Poof! Hey, whoa! Guys, check it out. I made a... Impressive, Carl. Aw, oh, Luke, yours is adorable! I'm not sure how much more of this training I can handle. Oh, it's Zira! At least the montage is over, right? I have bad news. Although your training is far from complete, it is time for you to test your skills. The Stickinator has entered Stick City. The Stickmen are not paying attention and do not see the imminent threat. You must ensure the safety of this city and this world. With all due respect, Great Stick Priest, how are Carl and I going to do that? We're not ready by a long shot. You have each other. Friendship is a unity not easily broken by what surrounds it. So what you're saying is we're basically doomed. Go and find the Stickinator. Only together can you hope to defeat him. Well, this plot ain't gonna move itself. Let's get going, Carl. Come on, Luke. This is gonna be fun. What are you worried about? He is worried that he will not be able to meet his destiny with the fortitude and unabashed bravery he knows he must break. You know, if you had said he's worried that the Stegonator will carve him to twigs and then conquer the planet, I would have agreed with you. What does unabashed mean? It sounds like a kind of pasta.